<clears throat> okay, welcome, welcome. Oh. Day. Hey, nice to see you, Wilson and Darius. You as well. You as well. You as well. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Morning. Morning. Dario, it's wonderful Dario, to meet you. This is our first time chatting. Time I'm so chatting. excited to have so you on. Excited to have you on. Thank you. Thank you. So let's see. So just so that everybody, so that everybody, hopefully, hopefully everybody, everybody knows who I am. Who I'm who this I weird am. guy who just brews coffee and, coffee and decides, and decides to do live streams. To do live streams. Um, but let's make sure that everybody knows who you guys are. So, Eric, I'm going to come. Um, here in Austin, Texas. And, uh, yeah, we're the featured uh, coffee this month with Espresso. So always a pleasure to talk to Wilson and really excited to have Dario here uh, to talk about the coffee with us this morning, too. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. All right. Dario, can you tell us a bit about yourself? About yourself? Yep. Yep. My name is Dario. My name is Dario. Uh, uh, I live in Brazil. I live in Brazil. I, was born in Brazil. I, was born in Brazil. I live in the Spirit of Santo. And I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, 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 I'm a coffee grower. I am graduated in food and science technology by the uh, and each and, and, and federal and federal federal, uh, federal institute, uh, institute uh, of Espírito uh, Santo. Espírito Santo. Okay, and okay, I'm and I'm I'm twenty four years, years old. Twenty four years old. Okay, awesome. Okay, <clears throat> awesome. So, so let's see. Let's see. I guess the first question, the first Dario, question that I have for you. Is how did you is get started, you get in, started in, in growing coffee? Growing coffee. Okay. Uh, well, uh, my family. My family. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a five, five generation generation uh, 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 Italian yeah, immigrant here in Brazil. Here in Brazil. Okay. Okay. And okay. my family. And my family. Uh, 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 coffee brewers. Coffee brewers. Around, around uh, uh, hundred years, uh, hundred or years or more. And and okay uh, okay uh, here here in general, in general when the when the people talk people about Brazil talk about Brazil they 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 think about they being producers producers and, and be considered be considered and, and commodities commodities uh, like uh, Nevada like state Nevada in the US. US. but here but here in in, in, in Santo, in, Santo, in general it's different, in general, it's different because, because, we, because we are we are uh, small producers uh, and, and, and the harvesting the harvest is manual is manual uh, 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 we, uh, we we get we, we get pick, we the, pick the, the the beans or the beans the coffee too the coffee in general four general times four times and, and, and the harvesting is the harvesting in general is difficult in general here. is difficult here not it, not it, not mechanical not mechanical, not mechanical, uh, mechanical uh, harvesting uh, harvesting and and, and here is and like here is I, like I uh, like Vermont in the U.S., like the the producer, the producer, is and but and it is but it is. Okay, awesome, and okay, it's. Awesome. I mean, and it's, I mean, that's really good to hear. That's really good to hear, because I because I. I personally really enjoy personally finding really enjoy and finding engaging with like growers who, who like care growers about what they're doing. Care about what they're doing. And so I would love to hear more so about that here in a bit. But let's uh, bit, let's uh let's ask Eric. Let's ask Eric. How did you how did first you start a relationship with Eric? How did you find this guy? How did you find this guy? Hey, so I I can't take the full credit. Obviously, uh, you know Dario, like he said, they've, his family's been uh, growing coffee for a long time in uh, Espírito Santo. Um, Joel, who is the founder of Casa Brazil, also does uh, some teaching in Brazil, uh, Q grader classes. 
Um, and so I think, uh, what, four or five years ago, Dario uh, took a class with Joel, um, brought him some samples, and it was really amazing coffee. So uh, I think we've been purchasing coffee from Dario for four or five years. Dario just said he was 24, so pretty much since he was a teenager, I think we've been buying coffee from Dario. So, uh, um, yeah, just, just through the, the time spent in Brazil uh, that Joel spent building relationships and teaching classes, uh, you know, often often pays off because we get to meet really amazing growers and, and find some really great coffees. So tell us about how, so about you, how you, as the as roaster, roaster, approach dealing with the Espiro Santo. Sure. Um, it's a tricky one to roast because it's such a complex coffee. So, uh, you know, we're, we're used to roasting a lot of Brazilian coffee here. It's the majority of what we do, everything that we do at, at Casa Brazil. Um, and, uh, but coffees from Espirito Santo are not as common. We have fewer of those than we do from, say, the, uh, the south of Minas or the Cerrado. Um, so these coffees are so complex that we really just want to find a sweet spot. You know, we want to do usually a lighter roast on the micro lots. Um, and we want to find the balance between the sweetness, the citric acidity, the floral. There's so much going on in this coffee that it's a, a tricky one to roast. Um, so we want to approach it to kind of find the sweetest spot possible where we're hitting all of those uh, you know, intense elements of sweetness, of floral, of citric acidity, and, you know, and, and hopefully not baking out the acidity, but while developing the sweetness and still keeping some of the nuance. So, um, we, we roast this coffee, you know, multiple times a week. We, uh, cup every single batch that we do, and we're always striving to make little tweaks and changes to, to get it just right. So that's, you know, one of the challenging and really fun parts about roasting coffee from Espirito Santo. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> oh. oh, and Daria, it looks like, Daria, looks like I can't tell if you're muted, tell or if not. You're muted or not. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to hear about, I want to hear about how, you how you approach growing this particular, growing coffee, this that particular coffee that we're drinking. But I'll, yeah. I'll give a, I'll, yeah. oh, you go ahead. Uh, you go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the, one of motive the motives that, motive that, that Eric, uh, Eric, Eric Call us, uh, call us the, the flavor of the, the body, of high body, and high very good acidity. Because uh, we have a lot uh, of mountains, lot of mountains and, the and the temperature the, here temperature is, is, uh, is cold, uh, colder than colder than uh, the uh, Brazil, 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 in general, in general. Uh, this, yeah. because, yeah. Of this, yeah. because of this, because of this, uh, we uh, accumulate we more beans, the beans, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and and because of because our, of the good our, process, the good process uh, uh, post harvest, post harvest, after after harvest, uh, uh, we can we, we can, can it's possible all these all these attributes. In general, uh, in general, uh, our uh, coffees, uh, coffees, we produce fully we produce washed, fully coffees. washed coffee. Yeah, but it yeah. is but uh, it is our uh, our base our base. Process. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, some, uh, some coffees, some, we, some coffees we, we, we produce, we produce uh, natural uh, coffees, natural too, uh, but uh, because but of, because the, of the, the, the moisture, in, moisture in our region, in our region, it is, region, very, very, uh, difficult. Uh, difficult, it is promote, it is promote uh, some, uh, some uh, bad fermentation, bad fermentation, sometimes, sometimes. Because of this, because we, of this prefer, we prefer fully washed coffee. Fully washed coffee. Fully washed coffee. Fully washed coffee. Yeah. That you, that you try, try on chest press. On chest press. Uh, uh. I was going to ask ask about that you know we're we see a lot of natural coffees from brazil um you know, and a lot of pulp natural coffees from brazil uh the Espirito santo is some of the of the first fully washed really bright coffees that i was able to try so um so that, that was uh, really exciting to see those different things um dario can you talk talk a little bit i know you just did about the uh why you choose different processing for for different coffees can you hear me still, Daria? 
Hey, sorry. Hey, sorry. Can you hear me still? <laughs> I know we're having some some audio issues. No. It's yeah, sorry about that, guys. Sorry we're trying to guys. trying to fix the echo fix here. The echo here. But I think we're just gonna have to push through because I can't figure out the issue. Okay. I'm a coffee guy, not a not an AV guy. Not an AV guy. Um. Okay. So let's see the. Well, I think we'll have a good recording afterwards. I can because I can hear you guys. Okay. Yeah, your audio is perfect. Audio is perfect. I'm hearing myself echo and I'm hearing Dario echo. Dario echo. And I've got all of the echoing things off. But yeah, let's just push through. Let's just push through. I wanted to talk briefly. I feel like we should give an introduction to the coffee that we're talking about because all three of us have just jumped in and we're talking about it like we know it because we do. Um, and then for those of the subscribers that are watching, you will have had this in the mail at least for a couple of days. But this is the Casa Brazil Roasted Espirito Santo. And it is um, absolutely phenomenal. I, in particular, have found that the like what I enjoy most about it is like how the sweetness develops as it cools down like it is one of those coffees that has incredible distinction over the temperature range which is one of my favorite things about it okay okay uh, uh, sorry I was on mute um <laughs> Oh, you're, good. you're good. You're good. The same thing right now as, as we speak. I made a, a fresh cup right as we were getting on online, and mm. uh, you know, 10, 10, 15 minutes into cooling, it's you know, just such a such a sweet coffee and bright coffee. Yeah. Okay, so something that I did. So something that I did. Our, our dear friend Josh, our, our Kimbell, friend Josh Kimbell in the comments is telling comments us that the audio is immensely the better now. Immensely better now. So hopefully, so hopefully, I can still hear myself I echo, hear but, myself anyways, echo but, but anyways, let's push through. Let's push through. <laughs> I've tried muting myself when I'm not speaking. Maybe that, uh, maybe that helps. Yeah. I'm muting my microphone yeah. when I'm not speaking. Okay. So Eric, uh, go ahead and tell us about how you got into coffee. We, we've heard Dario's story. Sure. Um, yeah, I got into coffee actually through through Casa Brazil and through Brazilian coffee. So these are always uh, always fun fun chats to have. Um, but uh, I was working in beer for many years um, as a brewer, um, and got to know Joel Schuler, who's the founder of Casa Brazil, um, and the crew over here at Casa Brazil just through uh, some classes that we were teaching. So we used to do the up and down tour, which was a, a half day long deep dive into coffee and beer so we'd start the day over here at Casa Brazil and drink lots of coffee talk about roasting talk about processing you know uh, kind of a seed to cup uh, half day course then we'd have lunch and then head over to the brewery and drink lots of beers and do a brewing demo and that sort of thing and so uh, so really just through you know kind of our love of beverage and and Austin um, you know Joel and I got to know one another through you know geeking out about coffee and hanging out and drinking beer and um, realizing there were a lot of parallels to our uh, to our uh, industries um, and and eventually Joel was looking to uh, start a cold brew program um, over here and something I always joke that it you know, was uh, hey you know how to put liquid into a keg I said yeah I think I can figure that out and so uh, so I came and kind of helped out with that project for a bit and just. Uh, uh, you know, trying out different cold brew recipes and different nitro kegs and and that sort of thing. Um, and eventually we got really into coffee and wanted to learn roasting and cupping and as much as I could and eventually came on here full time. And that was good, five and a half, almost six years ago now. So, yeah. Uh, and it is worth noting that we are, that we are, we're missing Joel today missing because, Joel he, today uh, because he, he threw out his back. So, his back, so everybody, everybody wish him well. Hope he, well. Hope he recovers quickly. Yeah, he's a... Uh, He's here, and, it, and he, Joel and Joel's actually been in Austin for the last few weeks, so it's been uh, nice to see him. Obviously, after this past year, we haven't gotten to spend as much time together. He is based in, in Brazil, um, so it's been here in Austin working. So, Dario, you get to see Joel all the time. Joel all the time. Is that right? Is that right? I'm heading at I'm Echo. echo. Uh, yes, we are getting uh, the yes, Echo. We are getting the Echo. I was asking Dario, do you get to see uh, do you get to see Joel often? Does he come by and visit? Do you guys have coffee? Yeah, I would I'd like that the Joel visit me uh, after the, this this time. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, no, Joel's Joel's a great guy. We're we're sad to have missed him um, today. So let's see. I this audio is is really bothering, but I guess I can. <laughs> I can I can uh, listen you listen on your uh, your question uh, clearly. Good. Let's see. I didn't have a question. I was getting trapped in the audio again. But I think we've I think we've actually fixed it. It sounds a lot better for me now as well. So, um, Dario, I guess the uh, the main question that I have for you right now is, what are your plans with um, Espirito Santo? Okay. Uh, my plan is to improve the, my quality uh, well, year after year, right? And if, if one of the interesting thing uh, about my read is uh, that the, the best cost from Brazil uh, the last year is coming to my region in, in Cup of Excellence, right? Uh, the, uh, the, the best cock from from your ear in Copa of Excellence is from in, from Espirito Santo. They get uh, 90 points uh, uh, in in the scale of the, the Copa of Excellence. And and in the last year we we started uh, a company here in the U.S. We with the plan uh, with the plan. Uh, that is uh, improve my quality and improve the quality of uh, the the, the, uh, the other producers in my region. Uh, help help the help the and that improve the quality too. And you're coming at this. You're able to help others in your community because of your, um, I assume, through your your studies, right? You said that you were a major in food sciences. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I conclude my my grad my graduation in food quality uh, technology uh, two years ago, I think. Uh, and 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 during the the, the graduation, I I learned about quality coffee with. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Lucas, and during the the graduation, I um, uh, the graduation I, I learning I'm turned a cube grader. Uh, okay, there you. So we got a question for you, Dario. Uh, yeah. Okay, I I my uh, I prefer. The wash coffees, in general, wash coffee. Uh, my wash coffees for me is, the, is my is my preference because of the the, the clearness, uh, because of the acidity, uh, the citric acidity. I think uh, in general, uh, and because the the high body, and uh, this is the most. So I think they're asking, how do you? So you like your washed coffees, but how do you brew coffee? How do you make coffee when you're every morning? The method. Yeah. The method of brew. Oh, okay. Uh, the Chemex is my, is my my I like a lot because because of the cleaners and the this method in general uh, show more uh, show more uh, clearness uh, and more acidity uh, and this show more the attributes of my coffee. That's a great question for, for Eric as well. Eric, how do you prefer to have your have your morning brew? Your morning brew. I was going to uh, leave this this one to you guys because that's always a tough question. Um, I just made a V60 of Dario's coffee right before we started, and it came out really nice. So so tip, typically a, a filtered pour-over of some sort, um, you know, a quick V60 or Kalita if I'm having one for myself, a Chemex if I want to make a little bigger uh, bigger bit to share um, and uh, I also saw Wilson that you had a nice uh, nice brew recipe up on your uh, site this week so I'm gonna have to try that out this week yeah it. tell me if there's yeah, I want to exchange I want to exchange uh -oh. is my uh -oh. echo back is my echo back 
Thick my echoes back. Thick my echoes. I would exchange brew recipes. That's the one that I've had the most success with so far, but it's, you know, been playing around and toying new things. I think next week I'm going to get into espresso with this guy, which I'm really excited about because that's generally my go to drink. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Great. okay. My echoes back. My echoes back. Okay, um, so Eric, I know that you wanted to talk a little bit about the Casa Brazil program and introduce the uh, you guys as the featured roaster, which, by the way, thank you for uh, providing the coffee, the roasted coffee. Thank you, Dario, for providing the green coffee to Casa Brazil so that they can provide coffee to me so that I can provide it to my subscribers. This is, this is the, uh, the entirety of the supply chain all right here, and that's uh, what I love the most. So. Like, Eric, you wanted to Eric, talk wanted a bit to about, the, about the the programs that you guys have. Programs that you guys have. Sure, and that was a that was a great intro to it. It's uh, you know a lot of what we do, and a very important part of Casa Brazil is the relationships that we've made, and you know both with the the growers and producers on the green end, and you know the the customers are ultimately going to be drinking the coffee. So it's really exciting to have everyone here this morning and be able to talk about it all the way through in this way. Um, just a uh, Quickly, you know, this is a great example having Dario here of a, of a region that I wasn't too familiar with when I started uh, in Brazilian coffee and coffee in general. So um, what we've done in the last year is we've launched our Explore Brazil program, which I should have a box to show you, but I, uh, it's Sunday morning and I, of course, didn't get started in time to uh, get everything prepared, but we're, uh, we'll we're offering you a monthly... We'll forgive you this time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, we're offering a monthly subscription um, service to help explore Brazil. So each month you'll get a uh, Brazilian blend, which is gonna be a blend of coffees that can be anywhere from Brazil, and it'll be kind of your typical Brazilian profile, sweet, chocolatey, nutty. Um, from there, we'll have a regional blend, which the Espirito de Santo blend is a, is a great example of. And that'll be an example of a high quality coffee from a specific region. Um, so we have Espirito Santo, we have Basado, we have Monte Carlo de Minas, um, I think we're at seven or eight different regions now. Um, and then from there, there will be a third bag of coffee in that box, which is from a specific uh, grower uh, within that region. So for example, it would be uh, our Bossa blend, which is one of, you know, our medium roast Brazilian blend, and then you would have the Espirito Santo blend, and then maybe something special from from Dario of a, of a small lot. Um, which by the way, we were talking before we went live and uh, something to look forward to, but Dario's coffee that we have on the way from Brazil right now in the container is, is really special. I'm kind of cheating and drinking that one right now. I will definitely I be buying a bag of that when it comes out. But, that, but, that's, out. but that's something to look forward to. So, so yeah, you know, we just wanted to talk a little bit about that. And for anybody who loves Brazilian coffee as much as we do, we think that we've put together a really nice way um, to kind of help people taste a wide variety of Brazilian coffee and, and, uh, and kind of, uh, you know, move beyond the, the notion that all Brazilian coffee is nutty or all Brazilian coffee is chocolatey and heavy bodied or, you know, in the past that all Brazilian coffee is commercial quality was a, a thought. That Absolutely. Had. Absolutely. So, you know, we've, yeah. we've been, uh, you know, I think for 15 years now uh, importing coffee from Brazil um, and, you know, have, have seen the diverse flavors and the amazing coffees that come out of Brazil. So we're hoping so that I think that's worth so I think that's interested worth. can dive in. Sorry to keep interrupting Sorry you, keep interrupting <clears> you. Throat> um, throat> but I do think that uh, that's, that's, that's worth exploring a little bit more. It's interesting to me that you guys at Casa Brazil, you only import you only Brazilian import coffees. Brazilian that's all you roast. That's all you roast. And yet and you still have this still wide, wide variety of different experiences different between experiences different coffees. Between different coffees. So can you tell us a little bit more about the philosophy behind that? Sure. You know, the company started as a Brazilian cultural center. So Joel and his wife, Lizzy, out of their house in Hyde Park, um, and initially, it was a, a, a place for Brazilians living in Austin and people who were interested in Brazilian culture could gather. They had music lessons, Portuguese lessons, um, offered you know, legal and medical help for Brazilians living in Austin. And, and in addition to that, there was a little store up front that had some Brazilian coffee. And it wasn't great Brazilian coffee, it was commercial Brazilian coffee. And so, so uh, Joel, wanting to improve his offerings, went to the local roaster, as the story goes and ask for a good Brazilian coffee. And the guy told him, there is no good Brazilian coffee. And so uh, that was that was a challenge, um, which we've yeah. you know, yeah. built, built a company around. 
of finding great Brazilian coffee. Um, so, so that was one of the reasons is that initially the company started as a, as a Brazilian cultural center. So, and Joel went and learned a ton about Brazilian coffee and that's where he is and what he knows. And, um, ultimately that was the reason at first that, that Brazil was the focus of the company. Um, but now going forward years, you know, I think we see a lot more in the U S market, a lot more high quality Brazilian coffees. Um, and there's just so much to explore there. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, it, it, it'd be like asking a, a importer, you know, how come you only do French wines? <laughs> it's a, no, to, to us, we, you know, look at it that way, that it's a, you know, there's so much to explore and we're always tasting new things and trying new regions. And um, especially right now, Dario can probably speak better to it than I can, but the amount of uh, experimentation that's going on with new processes and, uh, and, and just the, the level of quality and education and, and experimentation um, that's coming out of Brazil right now. It's, I don't think we're going to be anytime soon short on great coffees to, to discover. So I think we'll we'll keep doing it as long as people here want to keep drinking it. That's exciting. That's exciting. Well, so we do have a question for Dario. Question for we're going to throw this your way. Throw this your way. Any geisha coffees in the near future coming from Casa Brasil? Oh, there is very interesting question. Uh, let's. Uh, Two years ago, we uh, uh, planting, I think, uh, new a new varieties of coffees. Like one of the varieties is geisha. Uh, geisha is a very famous uh, variety in around the world, right? And one of the things that that Eric uh, called us is the quality. Of what what? People think about quality in Brazil. Uh, Brazil in general is commodity, low quality, and the reason of of of, uh, or of I'm trying to improve the quality in Brazil because of this, because we should be uh, modif modify the the idea of the people. Uh, we. We need to uh, improve our quality because when people think about Brazil, they uh, they should be think that we have good quality, uh, a lot of attributes. Uh, the regions are singular uh, attributes. Uh, Mogiana, they have one uh, one type of attributes, or uh, Cerrado Mineiro is another uh, uh, another type of attributes and the Spiritus Santo have a, we have an, uh, another other uh, attribute uh, but about Geisha probably next year uh, we will send uh, one lot of Geisha uh, to Casa Brazil uh, probably is a small batch small lot but probably uh, will be uh, the best lot that uh, will uh, I produce, I will produce. So you're saying limited quantity, uh, limited time run, special edition. Is that right? We have around uh, uh, when around a thousand threes of geisha in our our farm. This is this is a, a small quantity. And probably one or two bags of of this special coffee from from Asia. Okay, well that's exciting. That's something to look forward to. I'll keep my eye out. So we have another so question. We have another question. Um, my echo is gone for like thirty seconds. Oh, now it's gone again. We have another question from Josh Campbell. Uh, question for the three of us: Is there something in the coffee industry that you're particularly excited about? Um, Eric, do you want to field that one? Sure. Um, you know, I think I think one thing we've seen lately is uh, kind of touched on it when we were speaking just a few minutes ago. Just the uh, the amount of uh, quality and, and experimentation and new types of processes that we're seeing from you know Brazil, Brazil, and and, and everywhere. You know, Dario just touched on Geisha coffee. I think a handful of years ago, when you know the Geisha started winning all the Cup of Excellence, and Panama reintroduced their amazing Geisha coffees and. Um, I think uh, you know you. It was it was a really special thing, and now you see, hey, that's something that performs really well, and let's see how that 
see how that performs in Brazil and let's of course you know try growing that in uh, in Asia and so it's been uh, really neat to see uh, producers um, trying new things and, and kind of meeting that that market demand of, of new and special um, and you know it's uh, just just the amount of uh, roasters we're seeing popping up the amount of new uh, new uh, producers every year that we're seeing shipping coffee to the US it's just a really exciting time for specialty coffee I think and we have more options than we ever have before and and uh, we're all becoming you know learning learning new things every day and um, I said kind of before if as long as it keeps coming and people want to keep buying it we'll keep doing it I mean I think there's a we're gonna just see in the next you know several years no no shortage of great coffees coming in as as the whole chain kind of becomes a more more aware and there's more demand for these special coffees I think we're uh, we're gonna just keep on seeing the the industry grow and evolve and you know to places places that we maybe can't predict yet um, so we'll see it's a just an exciting time in specialty coffee, I would say, in short. Yeah, I, I, I fully agree with, I all, fully of agree with all of that. In particular, in I'm particular, excited to see I'm excited what starts coming out of China, coming mostly out of China, because I have a connection there. there. Mm -hmm. And I know that, and I know in, that the past, in the past, it was not great, it was not great but great. in the past couple of years, two or three years, they've been, the quality there has increased quite a bit. And so I'm really excited to see uh, kind of the roasters that get their hands on that stuff and play with that. Uh, but I'm I'm more of a gearhead, and so for me to answer that question, the things that I'm excited about are the uh, both like the innovative uh, equipment and gear that's coming out in the coffee world, but also that that means that there's like because of that level of innovation, to me that also means that in the near future the expansion of specialty coffee into your um, what do you call it? I don't want to call it the masses. I want to call it like your mainstream coffee drinkers world, people are going to be exploring more and more what specialty coffee means and how that affects them and the like production price of um, equipment will lower quite a bit. And that's what I'm most excited about is having that spread and become a more common thing in everybody's household as opposed to the, you know, the one click Keurig thing. It's perfectly fine, not bashing it too much, but uh, you know, I want more people to drink better coffee. Dario, do you have an answer to that? What are you excited about? Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm excited. The in the in the coffee industry. What is this? What uh, excited me uh, is the infinite possibilities uh, profiles that we can produce uh, with the different process in the in the coffee processing in the farm. Uh, the same coffee, the same fruit, the same cherry, uh, we, it's possible to uh, produce different profiles uh, um, through the, the different process. Uh, if you, if you, we uh, process in natural process, uh, we will have more fruity, more floral, and more sweet, and if you dip hope these coffees the the attributes is totally different and we can uh ferment it, these coffees too for 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 develop different profiles and it, this is this the, uh, the profile the, the the fermentation is one of things that i'm studying uh, i'm studying you know, on my uh, on, on on my gradu graduation and I, I'm studying yet uh, that the fermentation possibility uh, is possible uh, produce uh, an, another uh, profile of coffee it, it, this is exciting me yeah I totally agree I'm so excited by fermentation stuff I can't wait to see what you're pumping out there that's cool Okay, um, so first I'm going to open this up to you two, uh, Eric and Dario. Do you guys have anything else that you want to say before we go into a quick, short little Q and A? I know that we've been doing Q and A, but Q and A, but I no, just just wanting to thank both of you guys for for what you do on opposite ends of the of the coffee chain, which both are so important, Wilson, for you know promoting great coffee in in Texas, and Dario for sending us great coffee in Texas. So uh, I think that. 
you know, both of what what we do is kind of easy, you know, compared to what you guys do. You know, we just have to receive it, roast it, and put it back out there. So, uh, you know, we we couldn't do what we do without without the, the growers and without the the people pushing for that great coffee into the drinker coffee drinker. So, thank you guys. I think it's a mutual feeling. A mutual feeling. Dario, anything else that you want to add? Sorry. Was there Could anything else that? Is there anything else that you wanted to say before we go to a Q and A with the uh, audience? Hmm. I think I think I think is it. Okay. Awesome. Well, have... <laughs> so then we're gonna do like a last round of Q and A. If you have any other questions, send them over now in the comments. I am watching, and I'll give you. Let's see. How how long of an awkward silence do you guys think we can hold? You want to do like thirty seconds? You want to do like a minute? <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I saw you giggle, but you're muted. I was just uh, the awkwardly giggling at the awkward silence. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yes. and, and and also no, so noting the amount of glasses on this uh, feed this morning. I don't know if this is a record, Wilson, but but a lot of yeah. a lot of glasses yeah. going on this morning. Three pairs of glasses. Three that's pairs right. of glasses. That's right. I'm I'm the only beardless I'm, I'm one. I shaved this morning. I shaved this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we did Q and A throughout. I think we had some good questions throughout. So. Yeah, I think we've got it covered. Yeah, I, well, we always, I, I will always. say that I will say that you know anybody knows knows where to reach us if you have any questions. Wilson, I assume you're gonna throw everybody's handles out there. Yep, absolutely. Um, yep, and in absolutely. fact, I did want to say. I did want to say. I did want to uh, give, uh, give you the softball of, of uh, you guys are doing guys a little promotion for Tispresso subscribers. subscribers. Is that right? Is that right? We are, and I, uh, I that's how bad at marketing I am that I forgot the code. Um, but Wilson can send it to you. I believe it's just Tespresso. T. -E yeah, we'll put it in the comments. Yeah, we'll put it in the co um, and uh, yeah, anybody who's interested in uh, if you like Dario's coffee and and love Brazilian coffee in general, if you want to check out some more of our offerings. Um, we've got a discount code for Tespresso subscribers, um, which I believe is just Tespresso, and that'll get you a little little discount on your first order from us. Um, and we, uh, yeah, we ship anywhere in Austin and nationwide, um, and have a lot of exciting new coffees coming. So um, we've got a big selection on there right now. We've got another container on the way from Brazil as we speak, so we should be launching several new coffees in the next few months. So. Um, yeah, check it out. And also, like I said, you know, if you have any questions, you can get in touch with us through all the all the regular channels, Facebook and Instagram and email. And I think we have a phone in the office that someone answers occasionally. So we're, uh, we're, not, we're not hard to find. Okay, awesome. Okay, hey, guys, awesome. thank you so hey, much, guys, for, you so uh, much for, uh, for joining uh, on this call today. This call today. I, I learned I, a lot, I learned and I look forward to hearing more from you. And I'll, if we run into any questions, I'll pass them along to you guys. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. You guys stay caffeinated. You guys have a good Sunday. All right. Bye, y'all. All right. Bye, y'all.